here's some of my general thoughts on the freedom movement, and I'm really not an expert on this topic. I feel a lot less confident with this topic than most of the other things I talk about, so I may be wrong, and I welcome your comments and discussion. One thing I see people in the freedom movement doing is setting up their own opposition. When you shift the debate away from freedom and you move the debate over to something like socialism versus capitalism, You've been completely distracted from the real issue. There are free forms of socialism. Uh, anyone can go and join a commune and live with as much socialism as they want and with freedom because they've voluntarily moved there. Insurance, voluntary insurance is a free form of socialism. There are many free forms of socialism. Uh, and likewise, there are many uh, free forms of capitalism. And then there's what we have now, kind of an oligarchy that gets called capitalism. So. People in power love to distract the argument to things like socialism versus capitalism. How is it that such a tiny fraction of people are able to control so much of society? Because they're really expert at deflecting attention away from the issue of freedom versus slavery. It's one ethnicity against another, or it's one political party against another, or even within the freedom movement, you know, people that have very strict interpretations of which branch of libertarianism needs to be followed. People argue about so many different things rather than focusing on the big issues, the big ways in which your freedom is being taken away. I was kind of fortunate in a way to have learned by direct experience at a pretty young age that our government isn't always the benevolent protector of rights that we're taught and that sometimes our government can trample our rights brutally. And when I first learned this, I was so outraged and so angry for a long time. And finally, I realized what right did I have to be angry? What had I ever done to stand up for anyone else's rights? I, I always think of that quote by the uh, German pastor talking about the Nazis. First they came for the communists and I said nothing because I wasn't a communist. Then they came for the Jews and I did nothing because I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for the trade unionists. I did nothing because I wasn't a trade unionist. Then they came for me and there was no one left to do anything. If we've done almost nothing to stand up for the rights of others, then what right do we have to expect that society or government, which is a reflection of society, is going to stand up for our rights? There's a lot of complaining in the freedom movement about how my rights are being trampled or my money is being stolen. But there's not a lot of talk about how we can protect other people from these problems. So what are some other effective tools that grassroots movements have used in the past? Well, one is the judicial process. We're not really using that in the freedom movement. We, people constantly complain that the Constitution is being trampled every day, and yet very little case law is, is being formed. There aren't any groups, apparently, that go out there and consistently challenge these laws that violate the original intent of the Constitution. There's the ACLU that stands up for civil liberties, but that's more of a showboat organization and kind of like the PETA of the, the civil rights movement. Whereas in the environmental movement, you, know, you had NRDC, for example, that consistently brought case after case in order to protect the environment. We are not consistently bringing cases forward or even forming organizations of lawyers to stand up for our basic rights that whole judicial process is being largely ignored, at least that's the way it looks from my vantage point. Another effective strategy for movements in the past was to stop focusing so much at the federal level and start focusing more at the state and particularly at the municipal and county level. For example, there were people in Los Angeles County decades ago who favored a more open immigration policy, which was against federal law. They simply passed local laws that said we're not going to have our police officers assisting the federal government anymore with enforcement of immigration law. Whether you agree with it or not, it was a very effective policy. Likewise, you have uh, now basically a kind of a legalization of marijuana in, in the state of California through pr the proposition process, even though technically it's still illegal under federal law. So there are opportunities for people to work even at their small city level or even to incorporate a new city. Or along with working collectively, you can learn individual methods of freeing yourself and then serve as an example for others. But the one thing which doesn't work, in my opinion, is to simply complain about the matter. You can go around the world and see the most enslaved people, and they're always complaining that my rights are being trampled. And it's a long, difficult struggle to regain your freedom. For example, it took us 100 years to lose our economic freedom and turn into a nation of debt slaves. And it's going to take more than just voting in one election or marching in the street in a tea party in order to regain that freedom. If you're one of the relatively few people who's aware of what's happening to our society economically, then you have a unique opportunity to move forward into a more free future for yourself and for those around you. 
because systems of slavery always sow the seeds of their own destruction.